Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Monday, September 3rd, 2012. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube, ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. Um, all the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description so you can check those out. I'm going to cover um, Syria, Iran, and Central Asia and Asia in this first video. Uh, and hopefully in the next video we can cover the economy and maybe some drone surveillance, uh, cyborg type stuff and eugenics. France warns of Syrian chemical weapon attack. Um, we remember this from last week. Western powers are preparing a tough response if Assad's uh, government deploys ke uh, chemical or biological weapons in its civil war, says key European officials. So the French foreign minister says our response would be massive and blistering if Assad's forces use such weapons. He doesn't have to use them, they just have to what, move them. Remember that. Just like all the other shuffles, I guess we can call this the chemical weapons shuffle. Britain's Foreign uh, Secretary William Hague told the House of Commons he had asked the UN Secretary to begin preparations so the UN could quickly deploy experts to make checks if we have any reports of such chemical weapons being moved or used. We have not ruled out any options that, as this crisis deepens, uh, Hague told law lawyers. So just remember uh, Hague, we're going to cover him or include him uh, further down in this video. We talk about globalization and the empire, uh, but they're doing uh, a lot of uh, Israel and, and uh, basically Israel's work in that too, which is kind of sad. Um, so we have this response to Syrian chemical arms use would be massive, says France. Any use of chemical or bacterial weapons by the government forces of Syria, which were a massive and lightning fast response from the West, said uh, the French foreign minister. We talk about this in particular with our American and British partners and follow closely on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, so they don't talk, even include the Zionists. Then we have ambitions of France, Algeria in the eye of the cyclone. So this is part of a, um, um, a, a, French, a French source, I believe it is. It's all in France, but it's been edited. Um, there's also another one too, ambitions of France, uh, Libya, installation of military base of Libya for recolonization. What plans does France have with the project for the construction of a military base in Libyan territory? Well, one of the reasons I'll just say right off the bat is Algeria is one of the one of the countries uh, where uh, Al Qaeda and terrorists are being exported into Syria and into the Caucasus. Um, basically, it says here this concordance created in the region is another. Uh, that a new form of imperialism, the evidence being the construction of a French military base in Libya under the pretext of hardened cert oil fields. So they usually claim to defend the universal democratic values, the spreading democracy, uh, but basically it's to recolonize countries that they formerly occupied. And then we were talking about an installation of a military base in Libya for recolonization. As in Iraq, we're going to divide the country. Useful areas of Libya will be secured, but the rest of the country will be delivered to instability. In, in addition, yesterday, Brother Arabic uh, Anahar reported that French experts are currently in Libya and exploring the possibility of creating a French military base in the country. This database is built according to the same source, the two regions rich in hydrocarbons. The French delegation arrived on the 27th of August in Libya. In response to this information, a senior official in the Libyan army argued that the French mission was limited to, to military training and a contribution to improve the situation after the war. But originally it was NATO who, who wanted a place in Libya for a portion of its military arsenal. So while we're talking about the um, ambitions of recolonization by France, Let's not forget about the UK and the US. US urges African Air Forces to form NATO style ties. They urged the African nations on Tuesday to pull their Air Force assets into a NATO style effect or effort to take on terrorists and international criminals rather than struggle to fund costly independent operations. In other words, um, yeah, just uh, use the guise of terrorism. You know, that's, what, that's how we do everything. And, uh, and pirates and international criminals uh, basically to help uh, big huge corporations uh, come in and rape countries right that's how what it's all about on the tax to, on the taxpayers uh, back so this is what they want US drone attack kills 26 injures dozens in Somalia assassination drone was carried out on uh, August 29th the US claims the CIA run Drone strikes are aimed at militants, but witness reports and figures offered by local authorities indicate the attacks have led to massive civilian deaths. And this will be good for oil extraction. 
This article is actually from the 25th of February 2012. Britain leads the dash to explore for oil and war-torn Somalia. Government offers humanitarian aid. See, the, their humanitarians and security assistance in the hope of a stake in the country's future energy industry. And then when you go down, it says the summit followed a surprise visit by Foreign Secretary O. William Hague to Mogadishu, the Somalia capital, where he talked about the beginnings of an opportunity to rebuild the country. Well, what's he talking about? Britain is not the only one looking to develop Somalia's vast natural resources. Last, last month, oil exploration uh, began with the Canadian company called Africa Oil, the first drilling in Somalia for 21 years. Back to the most current conquest of Syria, NATO terrorists are targeting Syria's civilian airports in violation of international law. NATO-backed terrorists plan civilian airport raids. So they're getting desperate. I've mentioned this before, and they're doing crazy things now. And it says this is not, they're doing this as far as the airports go, not because of military defensive objectives, but to terrorize Syria's population, undermine the government politically, and paralyze civilian infrastructure. If you remember just recently last week, they uh, actually bombed a funeral and blew up a bunch of people that were uh, in mourning. And this uh, this article, they say that it's basically uh, a psychological tactic that they're using. So the Telegraph, the London Telegraph, reported that NATO's terrorist front warned it would target civilian planes using the airports in Damascus and Aleppo from tomorrow. The Telegraph would also claim that the Free Syrian Army suspected government was using the flight to bring in weapons. Like all of the NATO terrorist claims, no evidence has been provided by either the militants or the Western press. So the Telegraph has just reported that terrorists are planning to shoot at civilian planes and paralyze civilian flights across the country, a terrorist act by any definition or law. So this actually um, is considered a terrorist act and not uh, you know just or uh, basically it's illegal, even to corporate financier uh, funded NGOs like Human Rights Watch that attacking civilian infrastructure such as an airport can only be done if achieving a military objective outweighs the impact on civilians. So Syria has over 15 military bases including dedicated air bases uh, that are generally surrounded by networks of military infrastructure including storage depots, barracks, motor poles, defensive positions. So even making a dent into these facilities would require a standing army, air power, and armor, something the terrorists operating in Syria with NATO backing currently lack. Basically proving that it's a psychological uh, or psychological warfare. UN Security Council has no authority to support revolution in Syria, says uh, Russia's Lavrov, the UN Security Council, has no right to support a revolution on foreign intervention in Syria. He warned a, any plan to withdraw government troops while fighting continues is untenable and naive at best, he added. There are different attitudes towards the Syrian regime, but while fighting in the streets continues, it is absolutely unrealistic to say that the only way out is for one side to unilaterally capitulate. It is not a matter of ideology. We don't support any political figures in Syria. We just reason from what is realistic, he told students of a diplomatic university. And on moving on to Iran, we have U.S. intelligence community drafts report and saying that they're going to dump Israel, according to an article by Franklin Lamb, appearing on the Foreign Policy Journal's website today. The Israeli lobby is preparing to trash a draft report prepared by the U.S. intelligence community that suggests the U.S. needs to drastically reduce its commitment to Israel for a number of increasingly urgent reasons. Like, you know, if, if we keep backing the, um, the Zionist regime, then, uh, and I say we, like I have some kind of say in it, if the Western military industrial complex keeps backing the Zionists, then we're going to get, uh, we're going to get wiped off the map, right? Like, uh, they're so afraid of uh, of getting wiped off the map by Iran, uh, you know, North America is going to be in the direct sights because everybody knows who who's, who Israel really is. Uh, they're all backed by the West. That's who the real might is. So you're talking about a lot of these people that are Christians and stuff like that, uh, Christian Zionists that are being naive. And it's just like, dude, you don't have to take part in that uh, in that circus show. Then Iran must steer clear of U.S. interests in Gulf. Washington reportedly sends Tehran an indirect message saying it will not back Israeli strike on nuclear facilities as long as Iran refrains from attacking American facilities in the Persian Gulf. It could just be that um, Israel is now the um, maybe the new empire that's expanding, or maybe it always was, but uh, maybe it's coming out publicly now. Merkel urges Israel not to strike Iran, says report. 
German Chancellor Angela Merkel has urged Israeli Prime Minister not to order military strike against Iranian nuclear sites, reports the Haaretz uh, newspaper. So, you know, this is all part of a plan, I'm sure. Israeli judge warns against Iran attack. Strike high-profile Israeli judge who was responsible for the probe into Israel's 2006 invasion of Lebanon expresses opposition to plans or, yeah, plans in Israel's ruling coalition to attack Iran. He goes on and says it's completely irresponsible, warning that the attack was a threat to Israelis' uh, future. You have the senior North Korean official meeting an Iranian leader. North Korea's ceremonial head of state has vowed to strengthen ties with Iran and reaffirm a shared hostility towards the United States during a meeting with Iran's leader. Shared hostility towards. Man, dude, I love the, I love the journalism that comes out of the West, dude. Then you, you wonder why people uh, uh, just eat this shit up when they see it. You know, I'm talking about Americans or Canadians and that, and people in the UK, because it's uh, hostility towards, well, most of the hostility is coming from the West, going East. It says, Iran close to building an A-bomb like never before. On August 30th, UN inspectors reported that Iran had taken new efforts to produce enriched uranium. Iran doubled the number of centrifuges to enrich the uranium at Ford Underground Complex, officials said. In a quarterly report, the IAEA said that Iran had 20, uh, 2,100 centrifuges, and since 2010, Iran has produced nearly 190 kilograms of highly enriched uranium. This was carried by Pravda, and this was on today. September 3rd. So then we have embargo on Iran oil pushes up world prices as oil minister in Iran warned that the ongoing embargo on the Islamic Republic's oil exports will drive up global oil prices in international markets. Also what it's doing, I've covered this too because uh, there's been research done on it and stuff. It's it's really hurting the Iranian people and it's uh, a lot of people that don't actually support uh, uh, their government or regime as they call it are actually are just the only thing that they can think about is not the actual it's not just the nuclear issue of enriching uranium of you know is it uh do they have it or don't they is it for peaceful purposes or isn't the only thing that they can see is the increase in prices of food and stuff like that so we were just talking about the oil minister talking about the uh, basically oil prices going up then opec it's the western uh, Zionist's own oil cartel is to slash crude exports next month as refiners halt production. It's usually what they do for the fall. But what's different is OPEC exports are declining less than what's usually expected during this season, which shows strong demand in the U.S. and European markets. The message from prices is that prompt oil is scarce. Then you have this news uh, that's going through the media from September 2nd. Gas prices highest ever for Labor Day. They averaged 3.83 a gallon Friday, easily beating the 2008 record of 3.68. Then Russia news: NORAD holds hijacking drill with U.S., Russia, and Canadian military. The training exercises was led by NORAD, the same organization that stood down during the 9/11 attacks. Coincidentally, that two years before the 9/11 attacks conducted drills to simulate hijack airliners crashing into the World Trade Center. So it's like I said in uh, uh, last Thursday's news report, which is what. The powers that be want a terrorist attack, they'll get a flipping terrorist attack no matter how many stupid exercises they hold. It just helps the, you know, the, the world armies uh, basically be able to work together and, you know, uh, what do they say? Across the language barrier. Reports say Russia plans naval missile defense similar to U.S. Aegis radars. This system will be carried on warships and be able to intercept and destroy missiles mid-flight. Vladimir Putin fires space industry official for lost satellites. Our country provides up to 40% of all space launches in the world. They have to draw conclusions from the string of problems that currently exist, so they're firing them. And Moscow is going to spend $20 million in one day on meteorological defense. A clear sky in the city day will cost Moscow authorities 64 million rubles. This is the amount allocated in the budget to dissolve the clouds above the city in case of bad weather. So just like the U.S. and China, they all have their own weather modification uh, programs. They're probably all just working together. And uh, we'll finish up with this story. We'll come back and um, we'll continue with, uh, with Russia and Central Asia, tie that in with the U.S. and what they're doing over there. And then go into some China news. Global Blitzkrieg, West Terror Battalions, I Russia next. With the U.S. openly supporting army and literally cheering for Al-Qaeda, two cheers for the Islamists. Decade, for decades, brutal terrorist campaigns have been carried out in Russia by Al-Qaeda's Caucasus Mountains faction, constituting the backbone of the so-called Chechen rebels. 
So we'll talk about that when we return. This is GGN. Thank you.